everything inside of React is designed as a component, and these are reusable sections of code that we can sprinkle all throughout our application. If you have previous programming experience, you might be familiar with a function, which is a section of code that can be reused. Components work in a very similar way. In fact, we're going to create them as a function. The only difference is they are going to return HTML. Specifically, they're going to return what's known as JSX, which is slightly different in the context of React, but you can think of it as pretty much HTML. Here's a quick example from the documentation where they put a hello world inside of an h1, but then assign it to a variable. It's a syntax extension to JavaScript. It allows us to do more advanced things such as templatizing an h1 using a variable. This value will be substituted in. Here is another example where you can actually invoke a function to get a result, and then that will be inside of the h1. So you can kind of think of it as HTML and JavaScript mixed together, and this will ultimately evaluate to HTML. So to get started, we're going to create our first component, only three episodes in, didn't take too long. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have app.js open, and inside a source, we're going to create a new folder, components. And say we wanted to build an application for an employee directory, well, we might create a component called employee. So we'll type out employee.js. And here is where we are going to define that component. It's going to be built as a function. So we'll say function employee, parentheses, curly braces. And then at the bottom of the file, we're going to say export default employee. And this is going to allow us to easily use the employee component inside of other files. Now inside of the curly braces, we're going to say return and we'll just make an h3. Here is an employee, and we'll save. The way we use this employee component is from another component, such as app.js. We first import it, so we'll say import, and then we will say employee from, and then inside of quotes, the file. And this is, if you look at the file directory here, it's going to be in the same directory source, up a directory components, employee.js. So what it's going to look like is dot slash to say the same directory, and then components, and then employee. You don't have to put dot js. So we saved that, and now we can use this inside of our code. So instead of this paragraph here, we can render our own, what looks like HTML, employee. And the way you close this, you can do the closing tag like this, or it can be self-closed in this case. So we'll say employee and then a slash at the end. So we have this running from the terminal still. It appears that there's no errors of any kind. So let's go check the browser, head over to React app, and it says here is an employee. So basically it's rendering the employee component and that says here is an employee. This makes code reuse very easy, which is what functions do. So what we could do is we could take this line and we could copy it. And let's say we wanted to do this like, I don't know, five times. We can save and now we have here is an employee five times. If we wanted to change this text, we don't have to change it in five locations. We can just go to the employee component and change the text and it changes everywhere that component is used. So congratulations, you made your first component. At this point, you can put that you are a React expert on your resume. Just at that point, don't tell them where you learned it from because I don't want them to come back to me. But maybe by the end of the series, you really will be very well experienced in React. So let's keep learning. And this is just a start. You know, this is slow, it can take time, but using these building blocks, you can start to build some really cool stuff. So let's take a moment to talk a little bit more about JSX and what is returned from a component. So our component here returns a single thing and all components are going to have to do that. So even inside of app.js, there is a single return keyword and then parentheses to group everything together. And then there's one parent element here, the div. So everything has to go inside of a single element like that. Not only do you have the ability to return JSX or HTML, you also have the ability 
for logic to be inserted inside of your component. So I want to show an example of that. What we're going to do is at the very beginning of function app, I actually don't really like the way this is indented. I'm going to skew all of this return over one. That's better. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say console.log. We are about to list the employees. So you can put statements. Why does it indent twice for the function star? I don't know. I'm using some new uh, prettier thing. But yeah, don't worry too much about the formatting as long as it's pretty readable. So you can put statements here inside of the function before the return, including creating variables. So let's say const show employees. And we will set this to false, just as an example. Now what we can do is we can implement logic inside of the return to check this variable. And if it's true, we will display the employees. Otherwise, we will not display the employees. And you might be wondering, like, why would you want to do something like this? Well, we're kind of just going through theoretical examples. But, you know, you might have an application to view employees, but you have to have a certain permission level, you know. You have to be like... CEO or like C level. But if you're just a peasant, you know, an intern, you don't need to access all of the employee information. So you might implement logic like this in the application to view employees. So inside of our div, we can make a ternary, which will return one thing if something is true and return something else if it's false. So we'll use curly braces for any time we want to use JavaScript code. And it's going to say show employees with a question mark. I literally think about that in my head. Like I'm asking a question. Do you want to show the employees? Is show employees true? That's how I always remember that the question mark comes first. For the longest while, I always mixed it up and put the colon first when I was a noob. But now I'm a seasoned pro and I never make that mistake. So here's what we're going to do. If it's true... And I'm going to clean this up. So I'm going to get rid of this header. I don't really want that. I don't want any of this crap, actually. So I'm just going to clear out all this crap. And now all we have is the div. If it's true, we're going to put out all the employees. And then what you do is a colon to say if it's false. And in this situation, we can just do like a paragraph and say, you cannot see the employees. All right, so it's complaining, and this goes back to that same issue I was talking about before, that you have to return a single element. So we need to put all of these employees inside of a single thing. So we will say, you could say div, for example, or what you can do is use a fragment, which is just these uh, less than and greater than signs, which don't actually show up as HTML. So that works fine, and there we go. So it compiled successfully. A lot of moving around code, so make sure it looks like this. And now let's go ahead and check the browser. You cannot see the employees. And that is because show employees is false. Let's go ahead and set this to true. And now when we go over, it says here's an employee five times. So that's how you can do basic logic. And you can do console logs inside of here as well if you wished. So you don't just have to do it at the beginning of the function. You can say console dot log inside the return. I think we just need to make these as two separate sections like so, and that's what it's going to look like. So taking a look at the browser, you can check out the terminal. So we'll go to the console, and now in refresh, we have, we are about to list the employees and in inside the return. I'm gonna fix this error too from the manifest, so we'll go over to manifest.json. You could replace this logo or if you don't want to, don't. <laughs> All right, that looks good. And now we shouldn't have that error. Cool. So now we have some logic in our component, our app component. In a final application, the show employees value would be evaluated based on the user who's signed in and their privileges. But for now, hard coding it is fine. So to briefly explain a little bit more about the design of components, they are able to encapsulate functionality and the logic. They are able to have the content or what ends up being HTML and they can have the design. This means that your application 
is built in these self-sustained components and the different technologies are not artificially split out across different sections of the application. So now you can worry more about what each component does and how it should look and act by itself versus splitting the application up across. Here is the design, here is the functionality of each component, and then here is what each component is supposed to say in HTML. Maybe that point was obvious, but I just think it shows a lot about how you design and react when you think about that each component is self-sustained and does all of the stuff, then it makes building web applications a lot easier knowing how to approach it. You've probably noticed by now that we have component nesting here inside of the app component. We have these other components and that's totally fine. The child components here don't need to know about the parent component. So it's kind of like this nesting system think of nesting dolls where the main app component contains a component or multiple components and each one of those components can have other components. In the next episode we're going to learn about one of the most fundamental things of React which is props and this is how a parent component can give information to the child component to customize how it works or how it is displayed. So right now our display for these employees kind of sucks. I mean, pff, it doesn't say anything about the employees, not their name, nothing. So that's what we're going to fix in the next episode using props. Stay tuned for that episode and friendly reminder, playlist link in the pinned comment, hopefully if I remember, and I'll see you in the next one.